The Acolyte, set in the Star Wars universe, explores a completely different timeline than the movies. The show's storyline unfurls some 100 years before the main Star Wars films. It's set at a time when the Jedi Order was at the peak of its glory, and the galaxy was at its peaceful best. New timeline means new characters, and new characters mean a whole new bunch of Jedi entrants. Actually, even before the show's release, there was speculation that the Acolyte will have more Jedi than you've seen in any other Star Wars live-action content, and the show seems to have lived up to the hype, from Masters to Padawans. In this video, we will introduce you to every new Jedi entry from the first two episodes of The Acolyte, so let's get started! Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin! So, at the top of our list is Master Soul, who was too busy with Squid Game earlier to have appeared in any previous Star Wars content. Jokes aside, Lee Jung Jae portrays this benevolent Jedi Master named Soul, who is stationed at the Jedi headquarters in the galactic capital Coruscant, a city covered planet. Despite his soft demeanor, Master Soul is an extremely powerful warrior and is invaluable to the Jedi Council. When he expressed his desire to go on a mission himself, Jedi Council member Master Vernestra said that they can't afford to lose him at any cost. The High Republic era, which is when the show is set, is a time of peace and prosperity. This means Master Soul has ample time to train batches of younglings, who are young humans, Wookiees, and other species, aspiring to be Jedi warriors. As a first step into the Jedi Order, Master Soul asks them to tap into the Force, and the little ones come up with the wackiest of reactions, which the Master handles all too gently. However, there's more to Soul than just training younglings. He has a special connection with the deuteragonist of the show, Osha and Isaiah. Master Soul was once posted in Osha's home planet, Brandok, and saved Osha from a village fire when she was just a kid. He brought her back to the Order and trained her as a Jedi Knight, but Osha left after a few years. Soul was reunited with Osha again during the events of the show, when Osha's twin sister, Mei, goes on a killing spree, murdering Jedi all around the galaxy. Master Soul is also on Mei's list, but he believes that Mei has been corrupted by an evil master, so in Instead of outrightly defeating Mei with his Jedi powers, Master Soul tries to talk her out of it in a fight. The Jedi have also been assigned some more powerful abilities in the series, which we can see through Master Soul's character. He's able to temporarily paralyze his opponents, make Mei freeze in midair, and even read her mind. Torben. Next on our list is Master Torben, who appears briefly in the second episode, but his is quite an impactful screen presence. Master Torben too was once stationed on Rendok, Osha and Mei's homeworld, and his presence on the planet is linked to a terrible massacre that killed Osha's family. While what role the Jedi had to play in the mishap is still a mystery, what's made clear is that Master Torben feels terribly guilty and responsible for it. Torben resides on a planet named Olega, inside a local Jedi Jedi Temple, where he has been under meditative silence for 10 long years. Torbin took the bearish vow of silence, presumably following the mishap on Osha's planet. This vow was introduced in the 2017 comic book Star Wars Darth Vader, and its significance sheds much light on Torbin's past. The bearish vow is usually taken by the Jedi as a form of atonement for past mistakes. They leave the Jedi Order and try to make peace by tuning into the Force in a state of exile. However, Master Torbin's floating state doesn't mean he's vulnerable to outside attacks. He seems to be guarded by an impenetrable force field when Mei arrives to attack him for the first time. Despite all her efforts, she barely manages to get close to Torbin, who remains in a state of zen on the outside, while fully being aware of what's happening in his surroundings. Unable to touch Master Torbin, Mei decides to take another route. Master Torbin has been seeking absolution for what happened on Brandok, and Mei offers him that in the form of poison. Master Torbin Torbin breaks his meditation for the first time in a decade and dies by voluntarily taking the poison. Ah! 
Indera. The first Jedi to appear on the show is Master Indera, and she's also the first to die. Guess who plays the role? It's none other than Carrie Ann Moss, who famously featured as the spandex-clad fighter Trinity from the Matrix films. The character of Master Indera was conceived as a kind of Trinity with a lightsaber. Isn't that cool? This enigmatic Jedi Master is one of the most powerful Jedi warriors in the galaxy, someone who holds the highest status in a Force Boo fight. And that's why her death in the first few minutes of the pilot episode was so darn shocking. When we first met Master Indara, she was hanging out at the Lomi Uski Noodle Shop, owned by an alien on the planet of Ueda, a hooded young warrior steps into the cantina and challenges Master Indara to a duel. At first, Indara is taken aback by the audacity, but upon witnessing the ruthless maneuvers of the assailant, she is forced to join the fight. Just like Soul, Indara too can make people hover in midair and restrict their movements by manipulating the force field without touching the opponents. The assassin's many efforts to attack Indara were easily thwarted by this Jedi Master. She soon realized that her attacker bears a striking resemblance to a former Jedi Padawan, Osha. But in reality, it was Osha's twin sister, Mei. Mei's hatred towards Indera is made apparent when the Jedi Master refuses to attack her at first, saying, Jedi do not attack the unarmed. To which, Mei responds, yes you do. Mei clearly hints at the time when Indera was stationed in Brandok, and the village massacre took place under her watch. When Mei failed to even as much as scratch Indera, she resorted to deception. Mei distracted Indera by attacking the innocent cantina owner and meanwhile hurled a dagger at Indara that made her drop dead on the floor. <laughs> Kilnaka. Wookiee Jedi are rare in Star Wars lore, and hence the inclusion of one in the Acolyte is every bit exciting. Say hello to Kilnaka, a 7.5 feet tall, first ever live action Wookiee Jedi. Kilnaka 2 was posted in Brendok once, along with the likes of Indera, Sol, and Torbin. It appears, following the disaster on the planet Brendok, Kilnaka relocated to a serene forest retreat on the planet of Kofar, located in the outer rim of the galaxy. Now, with Indera and Torbin or already dead, and Soul making his way back to the Jedi headquarters, Kilnaka is next on Mei's list of targets. In the second episode, Mei's accomplice, Chimir, warns her that considering she struggled to assassinate a human Jedi, such as Torbin, killing a Wookiee Jedi is not going to be an easy feat for her. By the end of the second episode, Chimir and Mei have discovered Kilnaka's location and are on the way. Meanwhile, on Kofar, the Wookiee Jedi has made a home out of a dilapidated spaceship, presumably the one that took him there, and he lives a life of isolation. The episode's ending offers a glimpse of this intimidating Wookiee Jedi, who encounters a pair of hutty speaking scavengers near his home. As they plan to steal the hyperdrive of the spaceship and sell it for parts, Kilnaka arrives in time and scares them away with his roars. He force pulls the blaster carried by the scavengers and breaks it in two with his bare hands. That's just how strong this brown furred humanoid is. Wookiee Jedi are known to have exotic lightsabers with unique powers, and we are excited to see what all Kilnaka can do with his green energy sword. Osha Anisea. Next on our list is the deuteragonist of the show, Osha Anisea, who was orphaned at the age of eight on the planet Brandok when her mothers died in a village fire. Osha was saved from the massacre by Master Soul and Master Indara, who brought her back to the Jedi Order. Upon much deliberation, Osha was accepted into the Order and was trained by Soul as his Padawan. However, six years before the events of the Acolyte, Osha left the Order because of her internal turmoil, which interrupted her connection with the Force. Subsequently, Osha joined the Corp Sec and has been working as a mechanic on cargo spaceships. When we meet her for the first time, Osha was on board an Emoidian spaceship and proved to be an invaluable neck-neck to the alien travelers. However, when Master Indara was assassinated by Osha's twin sister Mei, Osha is implicated as a suspect. More so because it was Master Indara who had said that Osha's training at the Order should be ended. Master Soul has a special attachment with Osha 
Osha and is the only one who believes she did not kill Indera. When Osha's ship crash lands on the planet Karlak, Sol goes there to save her. And then onwards, Osha begins assisting Sol on his mission to track down her twin sister, Mei, who was believed to be dead all this while. In the second episode, when the Jedi named Yord refuses to give Osha his weapon, Master Sol steps in and says, as a former Jedi, Osha is more than capable of handling a stun gun, establishing his trust in the former pupil. Osha is both emotional and furious to discover that her sister is alive, because she believes Mei started the fire that killed her family, and is determined to bring her to justice. Interestingly, Osha's full name is Osha Anisea, and the series has another character with that moniker in her name. Mother Anisea is the enigmatic leader of a coven of Force witches, and Osha and Mei might just turn out to be her daughters. Yord Fandar. Next up, we have Yorn Fandar, who was once a Padawan learner at the Jedi Order, just like Osha. While Osha left the Order, Yord Fandar went on with his training, passed the Jedi Trials, and was promoted to a Jedi Knight. In the Acolyte storyline, he was assigned to investigate the murder of Master Indara. After interrogating the alien owner of the noodle soup shop where the assassination took place, and noting down the description of the assailant, Yord suspects Osha to be the murderer. He tracks down Osha to the Nemoidian spaceship and arrests her to be taken to Coruscant in a prison ship. Yord and Osha used to be buddies at one point, but because Yord is someone who operates by the book, he doesn't think twice before putting Osha in handcuffs. When Master Sol went to Karlak to retrieve Osha, Yord has his lightsaber activated, ready to take down Osha if required. Even on Master Sol's spaceship, Yord kept insisting that Osha should be kept restrained and should not be allowed to assist them on the mission. However, Yord warmed up to Osha later on Planet O. Olega, when he realized it's not Osha who killed Master Torben, but her twin sister, Mei. While Yord is undoubtedly a brilliant knight, he's not one who can diplomatically handle a situation, but one who wants to start a fight head on. Yord Fandor wields a lightsaber of an unusual color, yellow, typically owned by guards at the Jedi Temple. Tassi Loa. She is the straight-faced Padawan who accompanied Yord to the Nemoidian spaceship to capture Osha. Tassi Loa is a Zygerian Jedi, and this is the first time that someone of the Zygerian species has been featured in live action. The Zygerians are a race of feline humanoids from the planet Zygeria, located in the outer rim of the galaxy. They were introduced in Star Wars lore in the animated series The Clone Wars. Tassi Loa has tiny horns jutting out of her forehead and pointy ears. She she means business and was quite thorough and strict while interrogating Osha in her quarters on the Nemoidian spaceship. When Osha inquired why the Jedi duo had tracked her down, Loa took the lead and informed her about Master Indera's murder, stating that Osha perfectly matched the description of the suspect. Tassie Loa asked Osha where exactly she was on the day that Master Indara was killed. Tassie Loa didn't find Osha's answers to be convincing enough and produced the alien ship owner, who instantly identified Osha as the killer. Convinced that Osha is guilty, Tassi Loa warned her that she would be punished for her crimes and sent her off to the prison ship. Jackie Lawn. After Osha left the Jedi Order, Master Soul got a new Padawan apprentice in the form of the young Jackie Lawn. When Soul sets out to find Osha's crashed ship on Karlak, Jackie Lawn accompanies him, along with Yord. While Yord remains fully distrustful of Osha, Jackie Lawn quickly warms up to Osha after the former Jedi helps her fix a malfunction on the spaceship. Jackie Lawn also seems interested in Osha's past and learns how she came to be in the Order from Master Soul. Jackie proves particularly instrumental in Olega by suggesting that Osha should pose as Mei and try to divulge information from Mei's apprentice, Chimir. Master Soul liked Jackie Lon's plan better than Yord's, who suggested attacking Mei in Chimir's hideout. Jackie Lon is a more special character than you realize, as she is a nod to the half-human, half-thielin character Reese Dalsant from the special edition re-release of The Return of the Jedi. The acolyte showrunner Leslie Headland loves the character Reese Dalsant and Jackie Lon is her homage to the Star Wars films. As a Thelen human hybrid, Jackie Lon has a unique appearance with three horns on either side of her forehead and strips of spotted skin on the sides of her face. Jackie Lon is a calm and welcoming Jedi, as opposed to Yord's Padawan, Tassie Loa. 
Olega Jedi Master. We also spotted two more supporting Jedi characters who briefly appears in the second episode of the show. The first of them is the Jedi Master who greets Sol and his crew at the Jedi Temple in Olega, which houses Master Torbin. At first, he treats Mace breaking into the temple as a minor inconvenience, but upon learning that it is linked to an ongoing investigation, he assists Master Sol into Torbin's chamber. By the time they reach Torbin, he had already died after taking the poison offered by Mei. Finding Osha inside Master Torbin's chamber, the Olega Master was quick to fish out his blue lightsaber, thinking Osha is the murderer. But he's pacified by Sol, who explains Torbin died willingly by taking the poison offered by Mei. Olega Padawan. To round off our list, we have the Olega Padawan from the Olega Temple, who tracked down the local girl that helped Mei infiltrate the temple. Later, he assisted Master Soul and his crew in tracking down Mei's hideout in the city. The Olega Padawan identified Chimere as a suspicious person, which prompted Soul and his team to interrogate Chimere about Mei's future plans. Later, the Olega Padawan was assigned to keep track of Chimere and Mei, but they managed to sneak out from under his watch and make their way to the next destination, Planet Kofar. A shout out to Master Vernestra. So, folks, that's all the new Jedi that were introduced in the first two episodes of The Acolyte, and we are hopeful there's going to be more in the future episodes. Having said that, there's one familiar Jedi from Star Wars lore that appears on the show, and she is none other than Master Vernestra Rowe, played by Rebecca Henderson. She has been one of the most important characters in Star Wars' High Republic storyline of comics and books, which features her teenage persona. Vernestra Rowe is a prodigy who became a Jedi Knight as young as at the age of 15, she wields a unique lightsaber, which doubles up as a light whip during battle. Because the Acolyte is set in the tail end of the High Republic era, Vernestra features an older persona. She remembers Master Sol from his youngling days, which means Vernestra has been around for long. She seems to be in charge of the decision-making process at the Jedi Order in Coruscant, and helps Sol with his mission to track down Mei. We don't see Vernestra engaging in fights in the first two episodes, but here's hoping to witness her neon light whip in action in the future episodes. Have you watched The Acolyte on Disney Plus yet? Which one is your favorite new Jedi from the show? Please share with us in the comment section below. We are signing out for now, but if you liked our video, stay tuned for more Acolyte-related content. See you super soon.